Well, good evening, ladies um, and gentlemen. If there is anyone watching, there is. Now, we all know I have significantly challenged when it comes to um, to um, doing anything technologically related. So currently. It looks like I've managed to go live. That's always a huge positive in life. I've got my phone set so that I can see messages. We're a little bit early, but that is also far positive. We're in the right page, which is again a huge positive. And I think I have my the light issues from last time sorted out, which again might be a major miracle if nothing else so let's we just little wait for while people come in and I'm gonna swap to a different view so you can see what's on my desk and see my ugly mug because clearly seeing my ugly mugs a good thing or not as the case may be but so um, well, hello Beauty, good evening Anthony, hello Elizabeth, hello Barbara, hello Anastasia, thank you Sylvia for joining us. I'm really sorry for the ladies whose names are Polish for my own, no doubt, terrible pronunciation of your names. I do apologise, I'm really not very linguistically orientated at all in any way shape or form which doesn't help and I'm I, before we can I actually start my demo and we're just gonna wait until um, it's actually six o'clock to give everyone else a chance to join in for those that don't know me my name's Jill I am based in Manchester in the UK Manchester is probably one of the wettest parts of um, England and we had bucket loads of rain overnight um, and currently it's dry I'm rather hoping it stays dry so we don't end up with the noise of the rain hitting my conservatory roof this evening because that might not help matters it'll be a different form of technology uh, trouble for me but hey ho can't do much about the rain hello Sabine thank you so much for joining me this evening and thank you for sharing my post it's always much appreciated and hello to Pavaski from Greece. I again apologise if that uh, I have made a complete mess of your name. Um, I have been a mixed media artist now for many years, having done classes with Finnebear in about 2014 and picked up a lot of my um, techniques then and then have gone on to evolve my skills with a lot of support from Vasilis Kontos who is a well-known Pentart ambassador. Hello Sheila. Sheila, thank you for joining us. Hello Patricia, thank you also for joining me this evening. We have a pretty international audience, Greece, Hungary, uh, England, I think one of uh, South America, ca Canada. So it's lovely to see everyone from around the world. Um, I've got my camera set up, so hopefully you can see me crafting and me talking. And I've also got my phone, so with a bit of luck, I will be able to see your comments. Um, I've not done a huge man number of lives, so I don't always get it right. So please ask away. Just as a little note, um, it took about 30, 30 to 40 seconds for um, delay between me going live and Facebook actually showing the images that I'm um, doing. So if I don't answer your questions, I'm not being rude. It may just be that they're taking a bit for me to come through um, so I can see them. So please ask again if I miss anything. And of course, I'm happy to help wherever possible. Hello, Carol. Hello, Faith from, from uh, Scotland. So, so it is just about um, six o'clock and I have a 
approximately 12 inch circular canvas in front of me that I'm going to be working on this evening and I'm going to start by making sort of a rough a rough sea and, a, and sand area. Hello Marisol, thank you for joining us. Hello to Romania and also to Andorra. Um, so that's where we're going and then we're going to add lots of different mediums um, I've got some image transfer to play, some lasur gels, some sparkling gels, some antiquing gels, some glitters in fact I've got a veritable hodgepodge of different th uh, different products so we're going to start out by creating a C and I've got the matte acrylic paints in dark blue um, heliobor light blue yeah like ice blue i've got uh, a mint screen as well and then for my sand and my shells long term i've got white beige uh white ivory beige white coffee um this one is hazelnut and also vintage brown so quite a collection of different paints but obviously you don't need to work with quite so many if that's not what suits you and I'm going to just literally start by creating my C by putting some sort of squadges of the paint around I've got and then we'll spread these out a little bit with maybe some water and then add a C underneath it. So I'm deliberately not having it as a single tone. Um, I'm deliberately wanting to mix my colours up a little bit, going for a watery scene, and I'm ignoring the sky through the course of this, uh, this, this project. So there we are. So that's four different blues, um, and we might well just for good measure add some squidges of white so there we are so let's pop those out of harm's way because we won't need those again and i'm just going to add a little bit of water to my canvas um, to help spread these out so we're just going to um, add some of these through so that i get a blend of colors across to an approximate horizon line uh, I definitely don't want it all flat and I don't want to mix my colours all together because the sky is definitely not a single colour and we might need to add a little bit more paint into that mix but that's absolutely fine and nor is a sea a single colour so we're going to concentrate a bit more of the dark at the top and we're going to give it another squirt of water to help spread these about a little bit I'm rather liking the turqu the mint green so we'll just add a little bit more of that there and also some of the ice blue over here just to create some shade and some texture in amongst everything so there we are so, so I hope everyone is well um, and that everyone has been keeping safe um, and hopefully enjoying crafting because if we can't enjoy crafting then it's a very sad world when we have such beautiful products to to utilize and we are mixing in I think I might want a little bit more blue over there that's the ice blue I'm adding up over there and as you can see I'm deliberately just letting them blend together so I don't have a single tone I've got them all mixed in with what I want and I might add some, bit, some a little bit more white because I think it might look a bit nicer with a bit more white and added into it and as I say if this isn't there isn't a right and there isn't a wrong for doing things like this I do think I need to come down a little bit maybe but hey ho so there we are so I've sort of gone from dark to, to light down my canvas with the blue um, to create a variegated water effect there we are that we're going to add to anyway over time let me just cover that bit of that and now we are going to want some sand in the bottom and I've picked a collection of different colours uh, 
avoiding the obvious sand coloured paint because for some berries and best known to myself I don't actually have it in my stash which is never good but also so there we are we'll add some little some shades and, uh, hello Judith thank you for joining us this evening yeah right and how come is it yeah you know, every time you start a live that actually you start out with things working perfectly well you check them before you go live and of course the minute you go live something look so hello Denai. thank you very much for joining us this evening well let's see if we can get some of that that, that darker brown out there we are so again we're going to use a similar blending technique that might be a little bit too too brown but hey ho we'll add to it and we're just going to merge these two together i think i do want a bit more of the more yellow so let me just add this in there we are and we'll have a sort of sand effect and i'm not worried about the area where i'm where the two are joining to be fair because actually that's where I'm going to actually focus a lot of my composition so it will cover that line quite nicely um, through, throughout. Um, there we are. Have I got too much paint on there? Oh yes, but hey ho, why not? There we are. So let's just have a little bit. There we are. So we're going to pop that aside to dry for a little bit, but I will no doubt end up having to give it a little blast with a heat gun eventually. But hey ho, let's pop that into there. And of course, is there any room for putting stuff? No, because why would you have room for putting stuff? There we are. So let's just give this mess a little wipe because otherwise we're going to have stuff everywhere. And I don't actually like working in a mess half a square inch yes but a mess no there we are so we now have that one sorted and i've got yucky mucky fingers because i'm a mucky pup so the next thing i have done is actually prepared a lot of resin molds now i didn't think that people really wanted to watch me priming all of these um all the way through when it's, it's actually essentially the same technique but I've, as I've cast these from a resin I think it's quite important to prime them and my priming medium of choice is the Pentart bonding fluid so this one um, because it works very well on non-porous non surfaces so literally it is just a case of painting it over your pieces and leaving them to dry and as I say I've got a whole mountain of these that I have pre-prepared because as I say I've got a lot of them. The moulds are from Stamperia, they're from a range of different collections including um, that Sleeping Beauty I think, then there are some from uh, Sir Vagabond's um, yeah, so Vagabond Sea World, and then uh, from Antarctic Antarctic as well. So I'm just going to start by painting these with some of these colours, just to give me some different colours, um, as I don't want it all to be a flat coloured project. Hello, Vasilis. Thank you for joining us this evening. I trust that you are well. So we're just going to carry on, and we're going to give these all a little quick coat of paint because I think that that's quite a nice thing to do and we're going to mix the colours up um, and I'm going to add some different layers and different mediums so these will not stay um, these colours either long term so uh, that I'm going to add lots of details that will with the antiquing waxes and also with some of the Lassure gels to um, sit into the nooks and the crannies and give lots of detail so hopefully you can see what we're doing so this one is that I'm painting is obviously the huge huge castle and I'm using white coffee as my base color for this one um, being careful not to 
um, fill all the nooks and crannies because it's quite a um, a detailed mould and as I say for me I'm using this not as a castle but um, as in from Sleeping, you know, uh, Sleeping Beauty collection but actually as a sand castle for on, on the beach so that's that one and then we've got a whole mountain of other colours as I said so we're going to add some beige and, and I, again I'm not going to be precious about mixing my colours but I'm not going to cons the beauty of having the, of course the small pots um, is that I can put the paint out and I don't risk contaminating my um, my bigger pots it also allows you to have a lot of uh, different colours um, in a quite an economical way um, and I can then mix the colours I want on my project um, so I don't have a single flat colour necessarily so that can go there yeah we've covered that um, I'm going to add, add the hazelnut for my starfish and you could argue that it might be more orange but starfish actually come in assorted colours so we're going to go with the flow um, and stick to these sort of beigey browny creamy colours um, to tie in with with the overall effect and theme that we're going for um, there we are so whilst I'm happily doing this I don't think anyone else has joined me or my feed has decided not to carry on if anyone does have any questions then please you know please ask, ask me um, you know, I'm more than happy to try and help with whatever um, it's just got quite windy here so we might have um, some rain shortly which will be a pain but Again, can't do much about that um, so the corals so all I'm doing really is I've picked molds for texture for shape and for size so, um, so, and I sort of know where my composition is going with this little lot which is again is I think is helpful um, overall so let's just have some different bits of here and we'll have a cleaner brush at this point otherwise everything will end up with the same tone and that's definitely not what I'm wanting um, there we are we have a large collection of brushes on the side and no doubt I will use each and every one of them and cause myself to have a lot of work for when it comes to tidying up but I love these moulds um, because they've got so many details and they make they do make it super easy I think for um, for creating projects with interest and definition hello Julie thank you for joining us this evening it's much appreciated um, I've seen some of your work that you've done recently I, I think there was a, a gothic manner it is fabulous and I think you said that you'd used lots of pent art products when you were making it so please if you want if you can you know post it on the pent art page that would be lovely and I can't remember where I actually saw you post it so I apologize if you already have there we are so hey Oh. I'm sorry but I don't think you can short circuit painting really it just has to be done and uh, as I say it's part of doing mixed media projects and it's always a bit of a dilemma to me as to know how much to pre-prepare whether to prepare everything so it's just a case of putting it in place or whether to um, you know to have things and then just ready to paint and uh, and decorate you're very welcome to the, the project is fabulous I have to say um, absolutely worth it um, uh, worth total compliment because it's lovely so there we are I think I've probably I have got a few more but I'm going to leave it at that so I've now got a my sea themed pieces none of which we've got lids on which is always a mistake let's get the right lids onto these and another wipe of my hands um, because that's 
they are now filthy dirty with lots of paint because I'm a mucky mare um, but I think it's also quite good to uh, to show that you don't have to look at it honestly keep my hands clean make it look professional mm, well that's yeah Let's see how many mixed media artists. Well, I know a lot of the Pentart team do manage to keep their hands amazingly clean, but when you're picking up little moulds, I think it is more difficult to do so. So let's just give those a thoroughly good work. Hello, Sarah Lou. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Elizabeth. Thank you. It's nice to see you here tonight. Oh, right. And spot the obvious error. There we are, let's just cover, have clean fingers, then carry on and paint, pick up another mould that you've missed. There we are. Right, so I'm just going to pop those out of the harm's way, because that's where they need to go to dry. And there we are. Hello, Gail. Let's clear up that little lot. And let's see where we're up to. Have we got that? So we're going to go back to the canvas. It needs a little bit of a dry, I'm afraid. So let's just give that a dry um, because I want to add a ship image into here. Um, and it needs to be dry before I do that. So I've got a quite a nice, for me it's a sea, but it could just as easily work as a sky, I think. So let me just uh, get this properly dry before I pick up the next bits. And that's the headache, isn't it, of course, with <laughs> Mucky Hands is professional. Faith, I'm not so sure that I would necessarily agree with that, but it does show that you're making everything pop from scratch yourself, doesn't it? So there we are. Yeah. <laughs> you see, and then you pick up wet paint and shift it into the sky, <clears throat> which is not quite where you wanted it to be. Here we are. So we'll. I do you think that might be reasonably dry? So let me just give that a little waft. So I have um, a laser printed image here that I am going to cut out reasonably close. Those who know me know full well that I cannot draw or paint freehand for love nor money. It's just not going to happen. These actually are another Stamperia product and they've got lots of them in the range it, you know, it, that you can choose from. So something perfect for every um every situation and of course um, you know you can get them from from Pentart easily enough or uh, so there we are let's just cut around these I haven't done a lot of playing with image transfer techniques because in the UK laser printing is not something we tend to have in our homes uh, we have to go off to the print shop and get it but having found these and I did have a play beforehand, so I know that the technique works, so that's always good. So that's pop that in the bin, stick that over, that out of the way, that over there, and pick up the image transfer medium, which is another of the Pentar products. So I'm just going to um, put a really good layer of this really good layer of it all over my image that as I say is designed for image transfer and it's a let you know, but any laser printed image will do just as well and it's important that you have a good layer um, and the, it, you thoroughly cover every part of the image because it won't transfer if you haven't got it properly covered you don't need it slopping but you do definitely need um, a reasonable covering over everything so hopefully that gives me a good enough layer so that can go there and it's quite a nice technique it has to be said so let me just fish my image up and pop it 
down now. So having painted on the side with the print on it, um, I'm now going to put it approximately where I want to on my canvas. And it's really important at this point that you burnish it well down. You don't want any um, air bubbles in it. So I'm just using a bone folder to, to, to do that to make sure that I do have it thoroughly adhered across all areas working from the inside out you can see I've got an air bubble there um, so it's really that's why it's so important to to uh, um, make sure you have burnished it properly um, and I'm also getting rid of my excess glue at this point um, which make is making sure that the image is sat down properly onto my canvas um, I'm going to wipe off some of that in a minute there we are. Probably I was too generous with my my medium, but I would rather be more generous than under generous. Right, so let's just get rid of some of that excess. And the next part for this is that it actually needs to dry. So there we are. So I'm going to give it a little blast with a heat gun, having made sure that it is well and truly adhered. There we are. And give it a dry. Hello Gail, thank you for joining us. That's lovely. It's nice to see you here this evening. We've uh, got a, a good number of people from all the way around the world, which is lovely to see. Um, I don't... As I say, I don't that often do live, so... Uh, I'm getting better at it, I think, I hope. <laughs> Technology I have def sort of mastered now, um, but that was definitely a trial to start with. Uh, hello Lorraine, thank you for joining us and uh, welcome for the, to the first of the Pentart Lives. There are th usually three a week, In the, um, some of them will be in English, some of them will be in Hungarian we, and some will have Greek translation and also Spanish translation depending on where the artist comes from. But even if they're not in your language I think you should be able to follow what's going on quite nicely and see what's, you know, how things are. So, it's really important at this stage that it is dry and, and the, the image is stuck down before we do the next bit. So, okay. So, that's helpful. And, but again, it's just one of these things where, where drying stuff takes time to do. And again, there's no real short circuiting. I'm deliberate. I've got my head dryer um, over some of my shelves at the moment um, because I want this to cool down, and then I'll re-blast it with the, the heat gun in a minute as well, so that I'm not wasting in, in, you know lots of time with all the bits drying at e each stage. But there we are. So. Has anyone got any questions that they want to ask me? Well, you're being very quiet on the commentary at the moment. It's nice to see that you're all here but I'm watching. Oh. I'm going to give that just another quick blast and then dry. Hi, hi Joan, I'm sorry the notifications have only just arrived for you. Of course you'll be able to watch out. It looks like uh, several people have just got their notifications. Facebook is completely unpredictable, I think, around things. Watching in silence, Marisol. Uh, well, as long as you're enjoying what's going on and you can you know, and you have fun creating, watching in silence, it's absolutely fine. There we are, that just needs to carry on. So that's still way too hot for me at the moment. So let me just be patient and let these pieces let me move them down here so you can see what I'm up to. They're not going to stay down there. There we are. As I say, I, well, I'm not aiming for any even coverage on any of these because they're not going to stay as 
can you use the two part fine crackle the fine line crackle um, yes you could use it straight onto um, metal if that's the look you what you're wanting to go for Gail it shouldn't be too big a problem if you use it in its normal way and then add in the the uh, umbra or whatever patina you want to fill in the cracks um, if I'm doing a faux porcelain technique then I usually prime it prime my um, my metal pieces with bonding fluid first but if you are literally just wanting to um, to crackle the metal or give that a crackled effect then yes you can use it straight onto metal and you can use it straight onto glass as well just make sure that you seal it properly afterwards though um, in the same way as you would if you're with the techniques that I shared on creating craft a while ago so there we are I don't know why I've reheated that one wasn't intelligent but hey ho there we are so right let's see if we can so I'm just going to give this a good squirt with water because clearly I don't really want a big black or big white splodge on my piece of paper and I'm literally just going to bit by bit by bit carefully roll off the top surface leaving just hope what I'm hoping is just the back you know the the uh, the black outline of the boats that's there I might have been a little here we are it's beginning to roll off and again there isn't a, a way of short circuiting this it's either demo it properly and take the time or don't demo it at all and as there's no point in not demoing it properly we will just take the time to do it but for those that are not artistically minded then it's a great way of uh, putting an image down that can fade into the background maybe there we are I perhaps should have cut that a bit closer to the edge but there we are so but we can cover that area if necessary by adding a little bit of paint around it at the end if we want to we'll see where we're up to with time because obviously time is it's not quite of the essence but obviously we don't want to be here until three o'clock in the morning we've all got slightly better things to do with our lives I feel there we are and the art of this is is literally just to roll your fingers over it's not to scrub repeatedly um, just to let the paper sink in and lift it off but the um, By the time we've got the black, the, the white layer off, it should be, look reasonably nice. <clears throat> if you're going to, um, if you're going to, uh, you know, print words off just uh, you know, and do it for yourself, then remember that they need to be printed out back to front, um, and then when you flip it over, they'll appear on your process right, the right way. So I'll be <laughs> Anthony, thank you very much. I have to. I think that that it is a good technique for um, for doing a sky is to add those layers and just roughly bl uh, you know add the mix of colours onto your project and then just let them you know the colours blend together. Um, I did deliberately start dark at the top and work down to to the paler colours um, towards the foreground that was an intentional activity uh, because that's sort of how a scar uh, how a sea appears isn't it so there we are we are bit by bit revealing our image let me just get rid of some of those bits of paper that are clearly in the way i'm just going to give that another spritz because i can still see white here and we just have to be patient while we take these layers off 
but it, it is a nice technique and I have to say the image tra the image transfer medium is brilliant Sarah Lou and it does make life very very easy and if you've got a laser printer then I would suggest that it's a good technique to get used to um, and to using and to have the nice a nice product that works well for it um, is also a great thing isn't it there we are that's a bit more coming off so the the white the white of the back of the paper just needs to um, to to basically peel off so it just needs agitation with a finger to do that yeah i i i think that um it has been quite warm hasn't it i have to say we've had rain so it's been very very humid there we are that's that was a good piece removed there and there's something quite satisfying about doing this you know think about sort of peeling pva from school off your fingers it's sort of a bit like that in terms of satisfaction that's still a bit too dry so let me just add a bit more water there let it go through and sink in because this needs to be done all right Okay, that's me being impatient, madam. We'll sort that out. This is, having told you that it's important just to let the layers roll off, I promptly go and pick at it, but hey, yeah. It's, it's not good. It's like a gauche. Yeah, absolutely, Sarah Lou. I, d I want it to be in the background. I'm going to create a sort of sandcastle shell scene across the, across here um but i wanted something extra in the background and i didn't want to revert to um adding some stenciling although i could have done i wanted to try something that was just that little bit different um and that would give me an image into the background that would sit there and fill that white space but not overtake the white space if that sort of makes sense now I'm going to be chop that because I know I have made pulled the paint underneath there and we'll give that a good soak I don't know why but things like this always seem to take forever the paper left look like sails yeah it would work as sales i have to say and you, and you know once you've put your laser image down if you're not an artist and you, or you can't draw there's nothing that says that you can't then use the outline you've created and then paint it in is there you know so uh yeah i'm going to leave it as a ghost ship type effect because that's actually the look i was i'm wanting but you know it's it doesn't have to stay as a ghost ship you could just as easily um, paint in the extra details once you've got your image down um, you know obviously if you're a talented drawer then that's another matter but that's not one of my skills but mixed media messing around and mayhem is definitely one of my skills so there we are That's going to be an absolute pain there and irritate me, but it is my own fault, ladies. I do apologise for for not being patient enough with that. So there we are. Sorry, I've gone quiet. Um, I hope that this is not too boring. It's not quite like, like watching paint dry because it's wet and being rubbed off. But we have a little bit to go and I do want a bit more of this off rather than it looking completely whited out. That's not quite my intention. better 
hopefully avoid the bit where I know I've made a mess and just work up to it and push it off and hopefully stop stop it from being too messy. You've used a wet sponge. Mm. Oh yeah, we could uh, try a wet sponge. The fingers are working, Anthony. I don't know whether they are definitely working. Let me just shovel that lot into the bin. Wet a sponge. We can try a wet sponge and see if that was. Uh, don't know whether this will work. Yep. It's a little bit more abrasive, it has to be said. prefer my fingers. I think I've got more control with my fingers than I have with with my finger uh, with my uh, brush. We will get there, and any of the blue bits we'll paint in so, as we want to. Uh, yes, it will do. Yes, absolutely. But you do need a laser printed image. So if you've got laser printed paper, Julie, uh, on both sides, uh, you can peel off the top layer and it will reveal the paint at the surface for the one that you've put against the, the surface that you're working on quite happily. We are getting there, surprisingly, she says. I might be adding some little bits of paint where I've added, pulled a bit too much off, but hey ho, such be life. see there where where um, where it's lifted off the paint but we will sort that out imminently with some blue paint added into it go on be nice shift off that of course it's come off the bits that might get hidden by everything else better than it's coming off the sails which won't be on heaven hid, hidden so just let me that's better. Patience is a virtue not possessed of the Humphrey. But there you are. That's better. We're getting there. And I don't know how much, I think you might be seeing less of the top layer than, than I can see at the moment. But there is still quite a lot of the top surface that I need to shift. Hello Elaine, thank you for joining us. Thank you Anthony for inviting people over. It's much appreciated. There we are. going to be a pain but there we are there we are bit by bit by bit revealing our little ship perhaps I shouldn't have picked such a big image to work with who knows That 
was a big blow for freedom over that area and we're definitely going to have to be putting in a little bit of blue paint over that but that's okay let's have another mop and then we'll sort out the damage now obviously if you're more patient than I'm inclined to be and if you make sure it's really really dry before you start peeling stuff back you might well you don't you won't end up with a broken image but as I say it won't be a big problem because we're going to have a ghosted effect anyway so hey. right the baby wipes working a little I think it's because it's a little rougher right but I would prefer to get it done nicely for you to show that it does work nicely now we have the usual conservatory issue that I'm now getting hot and flustered but hey ho at least I'm not using a phone today for that to overheat that's better so I know that I'm going to pop we'll pop that there so maybe don't need to have so much of that off that bit but this bit definitely does need rescuing because that is going to be properly in view and it's still not soaked through so let me just give that a good squirt that's better And it is just a question of patience, I'm afraid, is this technique. I don't know how long it would take you with double-sided papers um, to get the top layer off, but there we are. Right, excellent. We are going to call it that, and we're just going to add a little bit of paint into those areas. We'll custom mix it, and... Uh, cover the white because we don't really want the white and then I can add some black lines in as I want to there we are so there we are there we are so one ghosted ship into the background reasonably disguised in amongst it the fingers are, are great blending tools aren't they okay so i'm gonna pop that aside to dry a little bit whilst we carry on so that can go over here now these are chipboard pieces from Samperia, and i have some sparkling gels now I don't know um, these are semi translucent and they have a glitter to them and because these are, are water themed that's the thorn gold this is the olive gold I, I think it has proven a bit of a, a workout and this is green gold looks like I've got two green girls I don't is it, yeah that's the one that's open well that's on the wrong pot because that's definitely not the green girl that's a different one but we'll pop that over there because that's over there. they do a sparkling white um, a blue and also a red as well so I'm going to want some sort of bluey green brownie mixed together 
I don't know if you can see this, but it, it has a little bit of a, you know, almost a, a gold shimmer running through it. Um, they call sparkling gels for good reason, because they do sparkle in a very subtle and adult, grown-up sort of way. And I love them, I have to say. I'm not, I'm not generally a sparkly girl. Um, I normally will run a mile from, from uh, glitter, but these I think are simply stunning. This is the green on its own that I'm using. So here we are. And there's a gold as well. I might fish that out for some of the the uh, other pieces because I know exactly where. Well, I think I know where it is, and well, maybe I don't know where it is. But maybe maybe we'll not worry about it tonight. Maybe we'll just stick with the browns and the blues and the greens. There we are. So it just gives you. <laughs> I only have the the white one. It, the white one is really pretty, Joan. And I have to say that if you like gentle shimmer, then actually it's worth investing in the other colours um, if, if you can afford to. And obviously not if you can't. I would never encourage someone to spend more money than they they can do so. But the effect is really very very pretty. And these are sort of my corals, and I, I could go for the red, red and gold version, but I didn't really want to add um, a red base into my pro project. Um, I wanted it to keep it with the sort of blues, greens, and a little bit of brown. There we are. And the, these dry really quite quickly. So, uh, and they're a lovely, lovely project to have in your stash. They're great for Christmas, um, water, anyone who likes a bit of bling, work well with cards just as a little highlight uh, onto things. Let me just pop the lid back onto that. <coughs> Anthony Menace, mm, who's been tempting with me, me with moulds all day? I know. Uh, th but there are some fab fabulous, fabulous moulds on the market, that is for sure. And I have, I'm very lucky to have a good supply of them. Uh, though I have to say, for value for money, I don't think you can beat the Stamperia ones. Um, there we are. So those are my corals done. And guess what? We're down to mucky mitts time again. Which isn't. Look at these, honestly. Can't take me anywhere, can you, really? There we are. One World Gingerbread. Yes, they would work very well for gingerbread. It has to be said, they would work really well for gingerbread. And for Christmas. There we are. So, let's just tuck those out of the way before we get the next lot of product products out so so this is the stamperia okra antiquing gel which we're just going to scrubble some into here into all of the details in here to make it a little bit more less one dimensional it's quite warm in here so I'm actually going to do this in in layer in stages because otherwise it's going to set and once it's set it's not easy to to lift off but I want it left in the crannies if you can see that by doing that it brings out the detail in the mold beautifully and it sits into the crack so um, and I like using this because it's a water-based product, so it doesn't smell. I don't end up with a thumping headache after I've used it, which is always a plus side, isn't it? It's not going to be harmful to the environment because there's no nasty petrochemicals lurking in it, which again, I think is always a positive. There we are. And uh, yeah, I just think that they, these are fantastic products and um, thank you to Vasilis for asking that um, Pantart try and develop a range that would be uh, suitable for using damp cloths on 
the, the okra is a beautiful colour, I have to say. Um, and just look at the detail now I have in that mould, just by adding that extra layer with that antiquing gel. And of course you could add a wax on top to bring it, but actually I don't really want waxes on this because um, it's not, I don't think it's not right for what I'm doing, but yeah, there's no reason why you can't. And it just gets into all of the nooks and the crannies and I'm much as I like vintage stuff, I think, do think that there's become a tendency for everything to become almost brown. Um, yeah, I, I'm lucky enough to do, have done classes with Vasilis and he introduced me to the uh, oil, pass, oil paint techniques. But I think that that just gives it a beautiful, really detailed effect. And... I've also got a whole, some Lasseur gels here, which I'm going to use in a similar sort of fashion. Um, and it's not their prescribed use, and we might add some white as well. So that one can go over there because that works for that bit of it. So this is the pine uh, Lasseur gel. So it's a different colour. Uh, and as you can see, it's, mine's not well loved. Actually, it is well loved because that's my second pot of it. And we're just going to add some of this onto here. Now, the advantage of Lusur gels over paints for things like this is that they are um, they're translucent. So you can see the colour below where you're working. So that means that you've got... Um, you know, the best of both worlds really. I can still see through there and whilst it's wet you can wipe it back um, on if it once it's dried and onto something then it's not uh, you know it's fairly stable but now my brown hazelnut painted starfish is much more starfish like and I'm just going to literally take a clean bit of my cloth and wipe over the top to leave the brown, yeah, you know, the orange there into that. So I've now got a two-toned starfish as opposed to a flat coloured one. And let's add some onto this piece as well. And all I'm doing by using these products is building up layers of colour, depth and bicep, you know, dimension and structure, uh, you know, and, and just some interesting details. I don't necessarily want it all to be that yellowy orange. So I'm going to, this is the, I think this is a more greeny base. So this one is called oak. So it's more like the leaves of the oak. But again, it will help give me some different, you know, a slightly different tone to what I'm doing. And again, I'm not going for um, perfection. I, because shells aren't perfect, are they? You know, we've got a mixture of different colours and shades and um, and that's what it's all about, is actually mixing things up and having a play. There we are. And I've chosen these because really, because I just wanted some different colours rather than just all uh, the the ones that are in the... the uh, Um, the antiquing gels but ultimately it's you know the color choice is up to you really isn't it as to which you what you want to do and where you want to go um, there we are so there we are we're just we're just adding lots of areas of detail we've this one is called country rose and you think, what on earth have you picked up a pink colour for? And, but to my mind, it's often, it's actually often more of a brownie pink uh, by the time it's on things. And that may just be me missing about. But I just wanted some, to add another shade up into here uh, to add. But it's still a vintage colour. And these work really well as wood stains. So, um, 
they're good they're they're lovely to have in your stash so there we are we're just going to add that back lock it back a little bit we'll have some more onto here once we've got this lot painted it is going to be a question of layering stuff up so we're we're not doing so badly i know that uh, the time's less of a headache but there we are There is a white as well you could add, but I don't don't think the white's the colour I want to add at the moment. Shelves are often lots of different colours, aren't they? And uh, yeah, and I could have picked the browns from the antiquing gels, but I think that again it's quite nice to have this mix of things. I'm rather liking that country rose onto there, um, and I do have. A country green as well. I'm, I'm going to swap that one though to, to that wiggle in a paint pot. Thank you. Uh, I say, I think yeah, we'll add a little bit of green. Not sure that. Well, I think that um, to be fair, I think that um, starfish can be pretty much any colour you want. There we are. By the time it's knocked back. So yes, I, I know that if anyone's wanting to create this project, I have got a pretty big shopping list of of products that I've used, but you don't have to buy them all in one go. You can use what you have. So that's that one, that's that one. And finally, Ooh, she says making a mess and popping pot in blue paint so we'll take that and pop that out of harm's way and pick up a clean brush because contaminating the ivory would not be a great move so this is the ivory that I'm going to add in to here you can see how how much paler it is so all I'm doing is again adding depth into perception now I would almost certainly uh, ultimately varnish this little lot before uh, either before I put on my project or on my project but I'm not going to do that tonight because you all know how to apply a little bit of varnish and I would go for the matte varnish because um, I think it would work quite well um, or maybe the soft touch varnish there we are I'll just add a little bit of that and let's add some into here so so i hope we're not boring everyone who uh, by uh, spending ages adding all of these colors onto here but i do think it's quite nice to be able to see how you lift projects up and i'm going to go back because i'm rather liking the country pink the country rose going to add that onto here and wipe it back there we are have we done them all answer no not on a postcard please there we are So let me get my products all back, lidded and safe. Uh, <laughs> that's right, correct colours, correct lids on the correct pots is always a good move. So that goes on that one, that one goes on that one, that one goes on that one, that's going on there. Can I see where I have put the ivory? There we are. So, there are about five more colours, so I haven't used the whole set of the Luthor gels, but I think that they are add to the arm, arm, armamentarium of colours quite nicely, along with the Luthor gels and the antiquing gels. And this lot now needs a little bit of a dry, because 
I'm going to start assembling things in a minute. I might have another go at peeling off some more of that uh, paper because it's irritating me. But I, can, I can actually do that after the live if necessary. There we are. So. Thankfully I have a fairly quiet heat gun, which is always nice. And although it's quiet, it is reasonably strong. Let's chop those out of the way. Thank you, Anthony. It, it, as I say, it comes from Sleeping Beauty collection, so it's not even a sea mould, but it, I think it works really well as a sandcastle. Um, you know, it's part of the British British institution, isn't it? Um, let me just see if I can get a bit more of that off there, because it's going to drive me mad if I don't. And you just have to carry on with this until it's lifted. I'm going to lift the paint that I so carefully put on there to cover up. So maybe I won't carry on with that for the moment. Let me just pop that paint, sort out that painting mess. Because that was clearly not properly dried. These paints, once they're dry, will definitely not be shifting. There we are. There we are. And all I'm doing now is adding some of this blue, just blurring the edges between my ghosted ship. There we are. You have to... Is a long term, we might find a, a, a title to put onto there to cover that bit. Why not? I'm the Encyclopedia of Pentarch Products. That's possibly true, Anthony. Yes, I do have a fairly good knowledge of Pentarch products. It's probably just as well. I've got a veritable arsenal of them, that is for sure. Now, I can guarantee that I will not get these in the positions where I started them out, but where I sort of thought about it. So we're going to pop you there. And I know I put that there, sort of into there. And I know I want something to almost go over there. And let's pop you into there. I think we'll have you over there. We're going to pop you up a little bit. There we are. So I'm just going to pop these sort of vaguely where I want them at the moment. And then build my composition around how I feel it might work quite well. So There isn't a guarantee, of course. I will get it how I like it, but there we are. Pop that one over to there. We're going to pop that one into there. We've got that one to go there. We've got another mould so we might pop we'll have a little play anyway whilst we're doing that we sort of know where I'm going so I'm now going to I've got some uh, Pentart Express glue here and of course we've got another blocked pot I love the Express glue because it does what it says on the tin uh, Jane, don't you worry, it'll be saved on the Pentart page so you can come back and look at it whenever you want to. It's never a, a problem. There we are. So, to do that. So this is the express glue because this is quite a thin piece and it's going to go flat onto my make. So I'm building almost an underwater scene as we go. We all have a life, you know, surprisingly, that gets, gets in the way of crafting. Um, but it, you know, it pays the bills and we all have to go with it. So let's pop that. I think we're going to pop that one there. Okay. And I'm going to pop 
that into that. So literally, but th this will grab quite quickly. And this is for here, it's about building a composition until you have a piece that you like the look of. So there isn't a right and there isn't a wrong in any of this little lot. It's very much about you know what works for you rather than what works for anyone else. And I have a coral with some description. So we're going to pop that so it pe peeks out underneath there. That's actually looking on screen quite nice, I have to say, even if I do say so myself. And we're going to pop that one onto there and we're going to pop our shell here. These all come out of one of the chipboard sets, so I haven't been ridiculously extravagant with um, with doing this, ladies. I know that uh, there's a lot of pieces on here, but it's it's not silly amounts you know, in terms of product to buy. You know, I'm all very conscious that we're living on a budget. So now all I've got is uh, some. Uh, Paint off matte heavy body gel in a bucket full sized piece because it gives me wriggle room, um, and wriggle room is always good. So that can go there. And I sort of know approximately now where I'm going to build my scene, so that's what we're going to do is build our scene around here, layering over the pieces so that the whole lot becomes a cohesive story does that if that makes, sort of makes sense um, hey, you might want to put some cardboard in the center of this one rather than just doing literally as I'm doing there popping it at an angle but I am going to add some other pieces anyway so that's not going to be a headache love that sound I love the whole thing thank you very much Brianna that's really lovely of you to say uh, I I do like the sea I has to, it has to be said it, it and, and I like sea themed projects and the next things I I like doing are you know, is to add extra things right so now we have some extra bits and a gap here and that's absolutely fine so we're going to pop i think another one of those <laughs> we're going to cover that join there because it's ugly we're going to cover that join then and we're going to we'll fill in with that universal fillerina that we all know and love very well don't worry about the excess gel medium we can deal with that we'll just take a wet cloth wet, a wet brush and lift that up out of the way I'm going to add all sorts of bits anyway so it's not going to be too big a headache um, da -da -da. I think do I want that, 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 like that, or like that? I think I'm going to pop that deliberately at that angle because that links those two pieces together. There we are. I'm going to do I want to add that onto there? <laughs> yep, we're going to pop that piece into that. So it's crossing across that. Let's just lift that huge junk of gel medium off there and then deal with this lot. So that's going to go into that.
and of course you can carry on and you can add more pieces as you want to there's there isn't a right and there isn't a wrong for this is there you know it's very much about what works for you or what doesn't work for you as the case may be and I, I don't know that I really want that piece of paper lurking in there um, and I do like that in there so I'm going to pop that last piece into there it's not at all how I laid it out originally but that does not matter it's a question of going with the flow right so we now have lots of bits and pieces and lots of mess and that's cool so we're going to revert to filling some of these gaps up so I'm deliberately going to pop some splodges of gel medium around to link my pieces together um, so that I've got a gravel, a beach almost, if that makes sense to people. And it will also help to hold these pieces together. Um, so there we are. Let's stuffle that into there into that space so that the shelves are partly in and partly out and partly buried because that's about life isn't it when it comes to the beach we have everything some in some out some not in there we are so do I need some more? We, of course we need some more. We're going to pop a little bit under there, there to help secure that. And some into there, going up onto that. And of course we want some texture added around the place. Anyway, so... Lots of different texture. I still want a little bit more lurking in that gap. And in there. Right, excellent. Let's pop that into that, that into that, lid onto that, which is cool. Right. So I have some of the pen tart. 3D balls. These are the small ones and I'm just going to have a good sprinkle of these into all of those areas of gel medium and they'll stick. I mean obviously I can shake off what I don't want so that's okay and what doesn't stick on the glue and I'm going to add a little bit of 3D powder also because it will fill in the gaps and give that um, sandy effect and I do have a separate pot that I keep for a mixed load of stuff so I'm just going to grab a sheet of paper and tip this gently off onto here and then I will pop that into my mixed pot. I'm very conscious that that gel medium won't be properly holding anything in place at the moment. So that's going to go there. That's going to go there. That's paper on the top. So I'll pop those out of harm's way. So there we are. Some of that will still come off. Um, if I want to. I did say those will all go back into the pot. And then I, I wanted a little bit of sparkle, you know, I, so I'm actually just going to add some little areas, almost to, maybe to resemble a rock pool, I don't know, I don't, um, or maybe to add a little bit of touch so it looks a bit more like water, um, I don't know, it's, it's really about what, what you like, isn't it, really? So 
So there we are. I'm going to add those just need to settle down settle down. And this is where I'm going just gonna sprinkle on some of the Uranus blue galaxy flakes into that. The white the glue will dry clear and I will be left with a little bit just a little bit of shimmer and again hopefully it'll look almost watery when it's finished and it's just sitting into all of that um, into the the glue and the gel medium and covering that up so that needs to go safely into another piece of paper you see I knew it was too good to be true and it would all come crashing down but let's just pop that back underneath there and we'll sort that out in a minute and that's what comes of doing stuff on a live when stuff is yeah still wet but that's okay we can pop that into there and it'll be fine there we are and we'll move that into there and we'll just clear up the mess that we made as that all went north there we are so i will almost certainly see if i can find a little sentiment or something to cover up over there or i might to find a stamperia bird and paint them so i've got so it might look quite nice with a bird in the sky um, sitting over there and I'll we'll carry on and lift some of that off there but that so, so I will carry on and have a play but that was the project that I was thinking about doing um, when I set out to do the live today so, um, so I hope you like it if anyone has any questions that they want to ask I will um, what I will do is I will post uh, I will <coughs> photograph this tomorrow uh, once it's all had proper chance to dry and then I can um, you know, have a nice picture and I will post that on the pent up page and also on my own page so I hope you like the project this evening um, and that you've learnt something from me making it and I wish you all a good evening and to stay safe. Bye.